Welcome back everyone. Today I'm going to present you one of the greatest civilizations in the human history. The Roman Empire. How it was founded and developed over the years by conquering and expanding its territories. How it has passed from monarchy to republic and from republic to the empire and eventually its downfall. Beginning in the 8th century before Christ, ancient Rome grew from a small town on central Italy's Tiber River into an empire that at its peak encompassed most of continental Europe, Britain, much of Western Asia, Northern Africa and the Mediterranean islands. Among the many legacies of Roman dominance are the widespread use of the Romans' languages such as Italian, French, Spanish, Portuguese and Romanian, which derived from Latin, the modern Western alphabet and calendar and the emergence of Christianity as a major world religion. After 450 years as a republic, Rome became an empire in the wake of Julius Caesar, rise and fall in the first century before Christ. The long and triumphant reign of its first emperor, Augustus, began a golden age of peace and prosperity. By contrast, the Roman Empire's decline and fall by the 5th century Anno Domini was one of the most dramatic implosions in the history of human civilization. As legend has it, Rome was founded in 753 before Christ by Romulus and Remus, twin sons of Mars, the god of war, left to drown in a basket on the Tiber river by a king of nearby Alba Longa and rescued by a she-wolf, the twins lived to defeat that king and found their own city on the river's banks in 753 before Christ. After killing his brother, Romulus became the first king of Rome, which is named for him. A line of Sabine, Latin and Etruscan kings followed in a non-hereditary succession. There are seven legendary kings of Rome. Romulus, Numa Pompilius, Tullus Hostilius, Ancus Martius, Lucius Tarquinius Priscus, Servius Tullius and Tarquinius Superbus. While we are referred to as Rex, or king in Latin. All the kings after Romulus were elected by the Senate. Rome's era as a monarchy ended in 509 before Christ, with the overthrow of its seventh king, Lucius Tarquinius Superbus, whom ancient historians portrayed as cruel and tyrannical compared to his benevolent predecessors. A popular uprising was said to have risen over the rape of a virtuous noblewoman, Lucretia, by the king's son. Whatever the cause, Rome turned from a monarchy into a republic, a world derived from res publica, or property of the people. The power of the monarch passed to two annually elected magistrates, called consuls. They also served as commanders in chief of the army. The magistrates, though elected by the people, were drawn largely from the Senate, which was dominated by the patricians or the descendants of the original senators from the time of Romulus. Politics in the early Republic was marked by the long struggle between patricians and plebeians, or also known as the common people, who eventually attained some political power through years of concessions from patricians including their own political bodies, the tribunes, which could initiate or veto legislation. In 450 before Christ, the first Roman law code was inscribed on 12 bronze tablets, known as the Twelve Tables and publicly displayed in the Roman Forum. These laws included issues of legal procedure, civil rights and property rights and provided the basis for all future Roman civil law. By around 300 before Christ, real political power in Rome was centered in the Senate, 
which at the time included only members of patrician and wealthy plebeian families. During the early Republic, the Roman state grew exponentially in both size and power. Though the Gauls sacked and burned Rome in 390 before Christ, the Romans rebounded under the leadership of the military hero Camillus, eventually gaining control of the entire Italian peninsula by 264 before Christ. Rome then fought a series of wars known as the Punic Wars with Carthage, a powerful city-state in northern Africa. The first two Punic Wars ended with Rome in full control of Sicily, the western Mediterranean and much of Spain. In the Third Punic War, the Romans captured and destroyed the city of Carthage and sold its surviving inhabitants into slavery making a section of northern Africa a Roman province. At the same time, Rome also spread its influence towards east, defeating King Philip V of Macedonia in the Macedonian Wars and turning his kingdom into another Roman province. Rome's military conquests led directly to its cultural growth as a society, as the Romans benefited greatly from contact with such advanced cultures as the Greeks. The first Roman literature appeared around 240 before Christ, with translations of Greek classics into Latin. Romans would eventually adopt much of Greek art, philosophy and religion. Rome's complex political institutions began to crumble under the weight of the growing empire ushering in an era of internal turmoil and violence. The gap between rich and poor widened as wealthy landowners drove small farmers from public land, while access to government was increasingly limited to the more privileged classes. Attempts to address these social problems, such as the reform movement of Tiberius and Gaius Gracchus, in 133 before Christ and 123 before Christ, respectively, ended in the reformers' deaths at the hands of their opponents. Gaius Marius, a commoner whose military prowess elevated him to the position of consul in 107 before Christ, was the first of a series of warlords who would dominate Rome during the late Republic. By the year of 91 before Christ, Marius was struggling against attacks by his opponents, including his fellow general Sulla, who emerged as military dictator around the year of 82 before Christ. After Sulla retired, one of his former supporters, Pompey, briefly served as consul before waging successful military campaigns against pirates in the Mediterranean and the forces of Mithraids in Asia. During this same period, Marcus Tullius Cicero, elected consul in the year of 63 before Christ, famously defeated the conspiracy of the patrician Catiline and won a reputation as one of Rome's greatest orators. When the victorious Pompey returned to Rome, he formed an uneasy alliance known as the First Triumvirate with the wealthy Marcus Licinius Crassus, who suppressed a slave rebellion led by Spartacus in the year of 71 before Christ, and another rising star in Roman politics, Gaius Julius Caesar. After earning military glory in Spain, Caesar returned to Rome to vie for the consulship in the year of 59 before Christ. From his alliance with Pompey and Crassus, Caesar received the governorship of three wealthy provinces in Gaul beginning in the year of 58 before Christ. He then set about conquering the rest of the region for Rome. After Pompey's wife Julia died in the year of 54 before Christ and Crassus was killed in battle against Parthia, the following year, the alliance was broken. With old-style Roman politics in disorder, 
Pompey stepped in a sole consul in the year of 54 before Christ. Caesar's military glory in Gaul and his increasing wealth had eclipsed Pompey's, and the latter teamed with his Senate allies to steadily undermine Caesar. In 49 before Christ, Caesar and one of his legions crossed the Rubicon, a river on the border between Italy from Cisalpine Gaul. Caesar's invasion of Italy ignited a civil war from which he emerged as dictator of Rome for life in 45 BC. Less than a year later, Julius Caesar was murdered on the Ides of March by a group of his enemies led by the Republican nobles Marcus Junius Brutus and Gaius Cassius. Consul Mark Antony and Caesar's great-nephew and adopted heir Octavian joined forces to crush Brutus and Cassius and divided power in Rome with ex-consul Lepidus in what was known as the Second Triumvirate. With Octavian leading the western provinces, Antony the East and Lepidus Africa, tensions developed by 36 BC and the Triumvirate soon dissolved. In 31 BC, Octavian triumphed over the forces of Antony and Queen Cleopatra of Egypt in the Battle of Actium. In the wake of this devastating defeat, Antony and Cleopatra committed suicide. By 29 BC, Octavian was the sole leader of Rome and all its provinces. To avoid meeting Caesar's fate, he made sure to make his position as absolute ruler acceptable to the public by apparently restoring the political institutions of the Roman Republic while in reality retaining all real power for himself. In 27 BC, Octavian assumed the title of Augustus, becoming the first emperor of Rome. Augustus' rule restored moral in Rome after a century of discord and corruption and ushered in the famous Pax Romana, two full centuries of peace and prosperity. He instituted various social reforms, won numerous military victories and allowed Roman literature, art, architecture and religion to flourish. Augustus ruled for 56 years supported by his great army and by a growing cult of devotion to the emperor. When he died, the senate elevated Augustus to the status of a god, beginning a long-running tradition of deification for popular emperors. Augustus' dynasty included the unpopular Tiberius, the bloodthirsty and unstable Caligula and Claudius, who was best remembered for his army's conquest of Britain. The line ended with Nero, whose excesses drained the Roman treasury and led to his downfall and eventual suicide. Four emperors took the throne in the tumultuous year after Nero's death, the fourth Vespasian, and his successors Titus and Domitian, were known as the Flavians. They attempted to temper the excesses of the Roman court, restore senate authority and promote public welfare. Titus earned his people's devotion with his handling of recovery efforts after the infamous eruption of Vesuvius, which destroyed the towns of Her Herculaneum and Pompeii. The reign of Nerva, who was selected by the senate to succeed Domitian, began another golden age in Roman history, during which four emperors, Trajan, Hadrian, Antonius Pius and Marcus Aurelius, took the throne peacefully, succeeding one another by adoption, as opposed to hereditary succession. Trajan expanded Rome's borders to the greatest extent in history, with victories over the kingdoms of Dacia, now northwestern Romania, and Parthia. His successor Hadrian solidified the empire's frontiers, famously building Hadrian's Wall in present-day England, 
and continued his predecessor's work of establishing internal stability and instituting administrative reforms. Under Antonius Pius, Rome continued in peace and prosperity, but the reign of Marcus Aurelius was dominated by conflict, including war against Parthia and Armenia, and the invasion of Germanic tribes. When Marcus fell ill and died near the battlefield at Vindabona, Vienna, he broke with the tradition of non-hereditary succession and named his 19-year-old son Commodus as his successor. The decadence and incompetence of Commodus brought the golden age of the Roman emperors to a disappointing end. His death at the hands of his own ministers sparked another period of civil war, from which Lucius Septimius Severus emerged victorious. During the 3rd century, Rome suffered from a cycle of near-constant conflict. A total of 22 emperors took the throne, many of them meeting violent ends at the hands of the same soldiers, who had propelled them to power. Meanwhile, threats from outside plagued the empire and depleted its riches, including continuing aggression from Germans and Parthians, and raids by the gods over the Aegean Sea. The reign of Diocletian temporarily restored peace and prosperity in Rome, but at a high cost to the unity of the empire. Diocletian divided power into the so-called Tetrarchy, rule of four, sharing his title of Augustus, emperor with Maximilian. A pair of generals, Galerius and Constantius, were appointed as the assistants and chosen successors of Diocletian and Maximilian. Diocletian and Galerius ruled the Eastern Roman Empire, while Maximian and Constantius took power in the West. The stability of this system suffered greatly after Diocletian and Maximian retired from office. Constantine, the son of Constantius, emerged from the ensuing power struggles, a sole emperor of a unified Rome in 324. He moved the Roman capital to the Greek city of Byzantium, which remained Constantinople. At the Council of Nicaea, in 325, Constantine made Christianity, once an obscure Jewish sect, Rome's official religion. Roman unity under Constantine proved illusory, and 30 years after his death, the Eastern and Western empires were again divided. Despite its continuing battle against Persian forces, the Eastern Roman Empire, later known as the Byzantine Empire, would remain largely intact for centuries to come. An entirely different story played out in the West, where the empire was wracked by internal conflict as well as threats from abroad, particularly from the Germanic tribes now established within the empire's frontiers, like the Vandals. Rome eventually collapsed under the weight of its own bloated empire losing its provinces one by one. Britain around 410, Spain and Northern Africa by 430. Attila and his brutal Huns invaded Gaul and Italy around 450, further shaking the foundations of the empire. In September 476, a Germanic prince named Odovacar won control of the Roman army in Italy. After deposing the last Western Emperor, Romulus Augustus, Odovocar's troops proclaimed him King of Italy, bringing an ignoble end to the long, tumultuous history of ancient Rome. The fall of the Roman Empire was complete. Well, this was all for today. So if you liked my video, please don't forget to subscribe to my channel and press the bell button to turn on the notifications for my latest videos. Thank you very much.